In order to understand how electronic music is made, first you need to understand how the synthesizer functions. Now in order to avoid a great deal of the more complicated science behind everything, we'll start with some small diagrams. Sound is an incredible thing. We use it to find key information in the world, for conversations, and for music. Now when you break down sounds to their fundamental forms, what exactly are they? Well, as many have learned from grade 10 physics, sound moves as a longitudinal wave. Longitudinal waves are formed from the displacement of particles in a particular direction. As those particles move, they create a particular sound and frequency. The most fundamental form of this movement is the sine wave, which is formed from the simple oscillation of the particles moving back and forth. Now, a great deal of you already know this information, but if you don't, I would highly recommend watching this video on the subject. It goes a little bit more in-depth in the physics of particles, and it's a pretty good video for just getting general knowledge of it. So at this point, you should have a basic understanding of sound waves, which brings us to the topic of sound frequency. Remember how I mentioned that frequency is determined by particles moving back and forth? When particles wiggle in this pattern, they create a sine wave, the most basic waveform. For this next example, I'm going to use a miniature oscilloscope. Here is what a sine wave looks and sounds like. Now there are a few other types of waveforms as well. We have triangle, pulse or square, sawtooth, and any others that can be thought up. A synthesizer's job is to take these simple waveforms and turn them into a usable source of sound for music. They do this by using an oscillator which, you guessed it, generates a tone based upon an oscillating waveform. Synthesizers also use a filter which changes the frequencies that are allowed through the circuit, which in turn changes the timbre of the sound. An example of this would be a low pass filter which only allows the particularly low frequencies to pass through, hence the name. This results in a much more muffled sound with the higher more treble-based frequencies being cut off. Finally, the amplifier changes the amplitude of the sound, resulting in louder or quieter tones. With these three tools, we can now do a great deal with this basic sound. By changing the pitch, we can create many different tuned sounds, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have a lot to learn if you want to understand everything, so please tune in next time where I will talk about how frequency alters perceived pitch. I will also cover low frequency oscillators, filter envelopes, and volume envelopes, and how they're used to further change sounds into something usable for music. Thank you.